What's up, Rig Pals? One of the first videos I ever did listed five words that people use to make themselves sound far more intelligent than they actually are. But the truth is there are many such words, vogue words, that have been pilfered from their appropriate context. So today, I'm going to give you three more that you can safely consign to the dustbin of your vocabulary. Ryan Kelly here, your square esquire and lovable prig, giving all manner of writers, rewriters, and speakers tips and tidbits on the lexical tools of their trade, the better that they might be able to distinguish themselves as careful users of the language and take their communication skills from enough to effective. I release videos every other Thursday, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a chance to learn the best ways with words. With that said, let's get underway. Our first word is oriented, which is, it should initially be said, much preferred in American English to orientated. Still, if you're a language-oriented person who happens to be success-oriented as well as audience-oriented, the best way to orient yourself to a communication-oriented style is to leave the word oriented alone, in speed-oriented fashion. Indeed, J. Harold Janis in Modern Business Language and Usage describes the suffix oriented as voguish and superfluous. But I think I prefer how John Bremner put it in his own usage guide. No one anymore. It seems studies something, or likes something, or works something, or is interested in something, or wants something. He is something-oriented. Our next word is parameter. I know I already lightly touched upon this word in an earlier video, but I wanted to use this one to perform a deeper dive. You see, it's not just that the word is a showy alternative for more precise and more readily understood options, such as limits, boundaries, conditions, instructions, guidelines, but its real meanings are so abstruse that our current use of the term seems ludicrous. Properly, according to Philip Howard in his 1977 book New Words for Old, parameter is native to astronomy, crystallography, mathematics, musical and statistical theory, among other technical subjects. And in these technical subjects, it carries precise senses, senses that more than likely you have no use for, and that surely don't admit of the maddening transferred sense in which we hear it from our coworkers, public officials, and every carking cable news anchor out there. I'd be willing to bet that at least a few of you heard the word in the past week even. Don't have to name, but feel free to shame in the comments below if you've got a story. Our final word is indicate. The red octagonal sign at the intersection indicates that you should stop or it just says it. My coworker indicated to me that it would be more helpful if I stuck around to finish the project. Or she just told you. The survey conducted over the past couple of weeks indicated that those who love words are less likely to cook. Or it just showed it. Wilson Follett tells us in his Modern American Usage that it's important to remember that the root of the word indicate is index, a Latin loan word since fully naturalized into English that literally means a pointer. Accordingly, it's best to reserve the word indicate for instances of indirect communication. Perhaps the president's tone indicated that he was determined to see the matter through. Or the steadily escalating rhetoric between the United States and Russia indicates a renewed friction between the geopolitical rivals. In short, where the words hint, suggest, or signify might be exchanged without any damage to the sense, indicate is in its proper place. But honestly, you should ask yourself whether one of those other words isn't actually closer to what you're trying to express. Unfortunately, as vogue words go, indicate is as vogue as it gets, and it's become a made of all work that smacks of evasion, trying to hide the ball instead of saying outright what someone said or did. It's certainly quite far from the plain English that brings us closer to those to whom we're trying to convey an idea, a judgment backed up not only by Rudolf Flesch, a leading light in the plain English movement in the mid 20th century, but also Rebecca Gowers, whose grandfather, Ernest Gowers, around the same time, was a pioneer in helping the civil service in England communicate more effectively. So don't just take my word for it, take theirs. To conclude, I'd like to draw upon the words of Thomas Piles in a 1958 article he wrote for the New York Times Magazine. He referred to vogue, pompous words as those, quote, intended to establish the user as belonging to a sort of verbal Ivy League. But we know that intellectual pantomime without the power thereof is merely pretension. And as you go and sin no more when it comes to these three words, remember that the most learned among us don't flex their mental muscles in that way. True intelligence is like the best writing style, unobtrusive, reserved, bringing itself to our attention only when the moment calls for it. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time. And remember, Propriety is always in.